Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Robin, and today I'm going to tell you why your animation looks bad and how you can make it look better. Now, this might be a bit of a tough love video, but you know what? Tough love is there for a reason, because sometimes it works. Not everything needs to be coated in sugar. Sometimes advice needs to be a little bit spicy. Not in a sexy way, in like a slightly painful way. Painful but good, you know, like really spicy food. So go grab a snack if you need to, gird your loins, and let's get started. The first problem that you might be making is that you're not blocking or planning out your animation. This can result in several issues with the timing and impact and appeal of your shot. One of these issues is having movements that appear to be floaty. Movements with no weight or impact behind them. Does your character live under the sea? That is pretty much the only time that I would think that this sort of animation would be appropriate. But actually even under the water, water will create a drag on you and this particular floaty look that I'm talking about still wouldn't look right. Because it's wrong. It's not intentional and it looks bad. So some of the reasons you might be getting that particular floaty look are that one, you haven't properly planned out the actions and their timing. Two, you're not using slow in and slow out or acceleration in any part of your movement. So the entire span of the movement is just constant in timing. And three, the movement is just too damn slow, like some external force, like water, is pushing against your character and slowing down their movement so it just doesn't look natural. You should know that there are two ways to animate an action. There's straight ahead and there's pose to pose. If you're serious about animation and you've been studying it, then you should already know about these principles. Pose to pose means that you're working from key pose to key pose. You're laying down those key poses first and then you'll go back and fill in the in-betweens. This method means that you've planned it out. You have a clear plan of action. You know what key poses you need to hit, you know what beats you need to hit, and you're giving yourself a defined structure to follow in your animation. Straight ahead means that you're animating from beginning to end the way a movement happens in a linear way. This is mostly where the floating movement comes in because you're kind of just winging it as you go. This method can be great for creativity because it's more spontaneous and you're not limited by the plans you've put down for yourself. And it's also really good for natural fluid movements. But without that structure and planning, there is a lot more margin for error and that's where that aimless floating sort of comes in. If you're not an experienced animator and you don't have a sound knowledge of timing yet, then it's not really the suggested method for you. Structure is not a bad thing. Plan out your key poses, get them done nicely with the timing and the beats you need to hit with your shot, and then go back and fill in your in-betweens. This is guaranteed to make your animations look a lot better. Use blocking, which is what I always ask my team to do, because it's important to get the flow and timing of the scene first before you've gone and put all this effort into refining an animation that you're actually going to need to scrap and redo because it just doesn't work with the movements that you decided to use. So I've spoken about planning your shots properly and your key poses. Now we can look at slow in and slow out and how that contributes to helping with the floaty movement effect. Slow in and slow out is the change in velocity of a movement. It'll start out slowly, then it'll accelerate, then near the end it'll decelerate again. It's the spacing of the action. Movements will accelerate or decelerate. They don't just start from 0 to 100. They don't have a constant velocity throughout. They're not just one speed as they go. Fixing your spacing will go a long way to improving your entire animation. The next issue that I want to bring up is timing, specifically movements that are too slow or too fast. Although it seems with inexperienced animators, usually the movements are much slower than they should be. And this also contributes to that floaty movement effect. You really need to study how real people move. Reference is your friend. People actually move quite quickly. The synapses fire, they tell the brain that something's going to happen. You'll see that there's a little bit of anticipation and then the movement will happen, but it'll happen quite quickly once it's started. It's not the slow, gradual, and I see a lot of this happening with newbie animators. It's just not natural, guys. I see so many characters end up looking like they're defective robots whose batteries are dying or something. It's really sad. Although if your character is sad or depressed, then their movements will be slower, but it's a deliberate slowness and you can totally see the difference. The next thing to work on is constant movement. People don't move constantly. Again, look at real people. It's not this thing where someone's always doing something. You've got somebody sitting at a desk. They're not like this the whole time moving their head and moving their bodies. I get that you're trying to fill up your animation space, but you actually don't need to. 
humans don't move unless they need to okay humans are lazy we try to conserve energy with our movements so they're only going to move if there's a reason for it reasons of communication like what i'm doing now with my hands i'm trying to communicate a concept to you so i'm moving or reasons of comfort so shifting your weight from one leg to the other or scratching yourself or if there's an external force coaxing your character to move if they have to move out of the way of a ball or if a cat settles on their lap and then they have to adjust their position for that but they're not just going to move for absolutely no reason and in their movements they still need to have pauses and settles people are not just going like this all the time can you imagine how tired you would be if you were moving literally all the time and it gives you no space to then put in anticipation or give impact to the important actions that you have happening in your shot. Constant movement is just thoughtless. If you think about good design, you need to utilize the white space to land your concept and give that concept impact and space to breathe. It's the same with animation and the actions happening in the shot. If you have constant movement happening in your shot, then your audience is not gonna notice when a really important action happens something that needs to drive the story forward or tell us something about the scene because there's just so much of this visual white noise happening that nothing seems important, nothing seems different, nothing stands out. So you're really going to struggle to convey any important concepts because there's just so much happening all the time. Another issue is purposeless movement. You need to be clear about why your character is doing something and what beats they need to hit. Why is your character raising their arm right now? Is there actually a reason for it? Because I, as the viewer, don't see any reason for why your character is doing that right now, so it just seems weird to me. Pay attention to the context of your scene. It sticks out like a sore thumb if a character is doing something for no reason other than the animator thought that they should be doing something right now. You can see straight away that there was no purpose behind it, they just wanted to put a movement in there because they thought that the scene was lacking something, but they didn't know what. Think of your character as a real person with real emotions, real thoughts, real physical needs. We can understand if your character is standing in a line and they need to shift their weight because they're uncomfortable. That movement makes sense to us because we can understand discomfort. We understand why a character would scratch their nose or why a character would brush their hair out of their eyes. These movements make sense and we're not going to question them if we see them. But a character just randomly raising their arm because you felt like your scene looked a bit boring, it just doesn't make sense and it's just going to look worse. So think about the context of your scene and any reasons for why your character is moving. One of my pet hates that a lot of new animators do is give their characters really shifty eyes because they feel like their character should be doing something but they don't know what, so they default to having their eyes looking around the room unnecessarily for no reason. Why? Why do you do that? Stop it. Your character's gonna look if they hear a noise here, sure, that makes sense. If somebody comes into their view, sure, that makes sense. But just saw my chilling, sitting on the couch, your eyes going like this for no reason? No, it doesn't make sense. Think about the context of your scene. Break down your actions into anticipation, action, and reaction. This is another reason why your animations may look floaty, is because they're all action. There's no anticipation and there's no reaction. Think about if your character is punching someone. The anticipation is drawing back your fist and shifting your weight backwards. The action is the actual punch and the reaction is that follow through and readjusting your weight, maybe putting out your foot to catch yourself as your punch pulls you forward. Every movement that your character makes is gonna have anticipation, action, and reaction, and that's gonna give you a much more realistic and appealing animation. Side note, if you're finding this video useful and are dedicated to improving your animation, then throw this video a like, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can keep up to date with my other animation related content. My next point is over animating. Now, I get that you want to be the very best, like no one ever was. And you want to show that you are by getting all this really fine detailed animation into this very short shot that you're working on. But please, rein yourself in. All of that is just clutter. 
you need to focus on your key actions and what is actually necessary to get your concept and the emotions across. Often, inexperienced animators will go and put all this time and effort into these really small details that nobody's actually going to notice, and then they'll actually neglect the key poses and the importance of the general appeal and staging of the shot. Again, it also just contributes to this visual white noise. It's kind of like when you're working on a painting and you keep going and adding these fine details and these little things and then you step back and look at it and you've actually stuffed the whole thing up because you just completely overworked it. Also keep in mind again that humans and creatures are about conservation of energy. They're not going to do this whole intense, really complicated movement if a really simple one would suffice. Following on from that is using too many keyframes, which can also be part of over animating. This often stems from not understanding how to use the graph editors properly yet, so you keep adding more and more keyframes to try and get your character to do exactly what you want it to do and just making it look worse. Again, less is more. So the more keyframes you have, the more stilted and less fluid your movements are gonna look. You really need to delve into the graph editor and learn how to use it properly to get your character to do what you need it to do, rather than relying on keyframing. You want to have smooth arcs in your movements and none of that stop-start rigid animation work that you'll see with inexperienced animators and it's always obvious that they've just used way too many keyframes. You shouldn't be using keyframes to try and control the acceleration or velocity of your movements. You should only be using keyframes for controlling the position. So please don't overuse them in cases where it's just not necessary. Believe me, the graph editor is your friend. It is there to help you. Now, bobbing heads. What is that? Why? Why do people do that? Do you see characters walking around like this? Oh, hey man. Yeah, no, I, I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? Oh yeah, you did? Wow, that's amazing. Okay, sweet man. See you on the flip side. No. Stop it. Guys, come on. That's not how people move. I guess it's the same as constant movement and purposeless movement, but what is it about bobbing heads? I, I see it so often. Why is it a thing? So just stop doing that. Cool? Thanks. It's also really lame to ignore the 12 principles of animation. And I mean, I mention them in pretty much every video for a reason, because they're gonna make your animation look better. So if you love yourself, do yourself a favor and go and print them out and stick them on the walls in your office or wherever you work so that you will see them every day and stop forgetting to use them. Seriously, that is an act of self-love that you can do for yourself. So I hope this video was helpful and I truly do apologize if it made you feel so attacked right now, but honestly, it's for your own good and it's for the good of mankind. Like, let's be honest, people want to watch good animation and I know you want to be a good animator. So take these on board. It all came from a really good place and I just want everyone to be the best that they can be. For reals, guys. So if this was useful and you learned some stuff, then you should probably hit the like button and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any other videos so you can learn lots of other really cool stuff and be the very best that you can be. Thanks for watching, guys. Love ya. Bye.